My life is being maximized as I'm taught the Word of God. The Word of God is maximizing my life. Now, I want to um, bring, bring something to you this morning that I believe that uh, the Lord is really speaking in this day and time, uh, you know, because right now we don't need uh, just anything spoken. We need to hear what God is saying today. We need to hear what God is saying at this very present moment. And so he has given me this morning, I want to encourage you, watch this, in his word, with his word. And the reason I want to do that is because that is what's going to keep each and every one of us is the word of God. You know, in the book of uh, 118 Psalm, 118 Psalm, and I'd like for you to go there with me, please, because I want to work, work on some things here with you. Amen. The 118th Psalm. Glory to God. There's something that's spoken here, and I want you to see it. Um, 119 Psalm, I'm sorry, 119 Psalm. Praise his holy name. And I want you to look with me, starting with verse number 89. And I want you to hear these words. It says, forever, O Lord. What? He says, forever, O Lord. Watch this. Thy word is settled in heaven. What? Forever, O Lord, thy word, your word, is settled in heaven. In other words, in heaven, there is no disputing of God's word. God's word is settled. There is no changing of God's word. There is no unbelief concerning God's word. God's word is settled that that's the way it is and that's the way it's going to be in heaven. Well, that is what God wants to happen in the earth. God wants his word to be settled not only in the heavens, but settled in the earth, settled in our hearts, settled in our lives, so that, watch this, so that we can be really uh, producers, amen, uh, of what God has spoken, and we can live lives of quality, lives of blessedness, amen, and glory to God. So it says in that, in that 119 Psalm, it says in verse 89, Forever, O Lord, thy word is, is settled in heaven. Thy faithfulness is unto all, how many? To all generations. Thou hast established the earth, and it abided. Watch this. Because he has, his word is settled, he's established the earth, and the earth still remains. The earth still abides. It goes on and says, they continue this day according to thine ordinances, for they are all thy servants. So the world, the earth that God created, and everything that God created continues to this day, amen, because God said it. Because God spoke it, because God put it into motion, whatever God has spoken is still going on right now. There's not one thing that God has spoken that is not happening right now in this earth. Amen. The earth remains because of God and because of his word. Amen. And so it says, it's not only this, but it says, for they are all servants. They are thy servants. They are the servants of God. Now, you, you, when you think about a servant, you wouldn't think about the earth being a servant. Right. Hallelujah. You just think it's a planet. But no, it's serving, watch this, God's purpose because God spoke it. Because God is the one that spoke it to be. Amen? So he is the creator of all the earth. He is the creator of the universe. And because he spoke it and it is here, watch this, it has purpose. And that's why, oh God, thank you so much. That's why the earth remains because the earth still has, watch this, purpose through God. Amen? God's purpose is going to be established. God's purpose is going to be succeed where his word is honored. My Lord, be exalted. Be exalted. And then I want you to look with me at the 118th Psalm. I ran across this the other day, and I, I'm so thankful to God for his word because the Lord is just so good to us. Hallelujah. And I'm going to start with the, in the 118th Psalm. I'm going to start with the first verse. With the first verse. He says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. <laughs> Because his mercy endureth forever. <laughs> Let Israel now say that this, this mercy, his mercy endureth forever. Now I want you to say his mercy endureth forever. Come on, say that with me. His mercy endureth forever. Glory to God. And then the fourth, third verse, it says, Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Then the fourth verse says, Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. Now, you think about this. What, in essence, what this is trying to get us to see is everybody should know 
that the Lord's mercy endureth forever. Now, that's a powerful statement, and I know a lot of times we, take, we read over and gloss over things, but that's a very powerful statement when you come to, pass, come to realize that his mercy endures forever, forever for all of us. So, you know, a lot of times we condemn ourselves, but we thank God for his mercy. Amen. Because his mercy helps to recover us out of the snare. It helps to recover us out of our situations and circumstances because God's mercy endures forever. So that means there's never a time that God's mercy is not available. Hallelujah to his name. And then in the fifth verse, it says, I called upon the Lord in distress. <laughs> A difficult time, difficult situation. I called upon the Lord. Amen. In distress. And look at what he says. The Lord answered me. He did what? He answered me. I called upon him and he heard me. He answered me. But now watch what happened. Watch what happened. Out of distress, he set me in a large place. <laughs> now, amen. When the Lord brings you out, when the Lord brings you out, you ought to expect to be set, watch this, in a large place. What do you mean a large place? A place of blessing, a place where God's presence has you and God's presence is with you continually. There is no situation that God cannot deliver you from. There's no circumstance that God cannot deliver you from. There's no disease, there's no sickness that God cannot deliver you from. God is the God that delivers you. He brings you out. He hears you when you call upon him. And not only does he hear you when you call upon him, but he sets you in a large place. So that's the mind of God. Now, the mind of men will say that's not the truth. You know, mind of men a lot of times. And that's why you can't be concerned about what men are saying in the earth. You have to be concerned really with what God is saying. And that's why we want to hear the word of God, hear the voice of God, the voice of God speaking to each and every one of us. Because when God speaks, things happen. Hallelujah. When God speaks, nothing can remain the same. In Hebrews, it tells us that God upholds all things by the word of his power. So the earth, everything that's being sustained, everything that God has created, that God has sustained, is, is being upheld by the word of his power. He spoke it. And because he spoke it, it must happen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I, I tell you what, I am so thankful that God speaks in my life because what he speaks, and I'm I, I reminded of Solomon. Solomon's about to go on, uh, on, on, on in, in passing from this earth. And Solomon said, not one good promise, not one good promise that the Lord has spoken has failed to come to pass. Now you think about that. If he can say that at that time, if he, if he can say that not one good thing that the Lord has spoken has, or promised has, has, not, uh, has fallen away or have not happened, basically, have not come to pass, then that's a very powerful statement because what is he doing? He has put his trust in the Lord. Amen and glory to God. I want you to look at, with me at, at the fourth chapter of the book of Matthew. Hallelujah. And at that, in that fourth chapter of the, fourth, of, the, of the book of Matthew, the fourth verse says this. It says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, okay? That's not, see, that's, that's letting us know, don't be foolish, we need bread. <laughs> but bread is not the all answer all. It's not the answer to everything, amen? Bread is, bread is there and bread is good, but you shall not live by bread alone, hallelujah. In other words, you don't, you don't just live by feeding your body, but you live, that's what I'm saying to you, you live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. If God said it, that's what you're to live by. Amen? Doesn't matter what other people believe, doesn't matter who's trying to change things, who's trying to change the natural use of the body, who's trying to change your thoughts about things and what God has said, it doesn't matter. We live by what God said. Hallelujah. I don't care. <laughs> you know, let, let me say like this, God, the reason a lot of times people hate God or hate Christians, or hate church, is because you stand for the things that God stands for. And so people find that offensive to them, and they feel like you're judging them, but no, we're just simply living by the word of God. I tell you what, I love everybody. I don't care who you are. I love you, but I'm not going to allow you, hallelujah, or anyone else to take me away from what the word says. Hallelujah. The Lord our God is faithful, saints. He is faithful. He is faithful. So the word of God is intended to, to, to guide us, the word of God is intended to direct us. As a matter of fact, in the Psalms, in the 119th Psalm, 
It says this, thy word, O God, thy word, O Lord, thy word, your word is a lamp unto my feet. In other words, it lights up where I am. Your word gives my presence moment light. He says your word also is a light unto my path. So watch this. So in other words, if I follow the word, follow what God's speaking, then what I'm going to find is a lighted path, a path that I can take, that I can see. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I tell you, God is so good. God is so faithful. Nobody like our God. Hallelujah to his name. Glory, glory, glory to the name of our God. There are things that God has been speaking to you, and he's told you over and over again, and we have ignored those things. We have decided that we will do it our way, and that's not going to work. Hallelujah. It won't work. In the book of Luke, the fourth chap- fifth chapter of the book of Luke, I want you to turn that with me real quick. Uh, and I want to show you something here because the word, again, the word is designed to guide us. The word of God is to instruct us. The word of God is to give us direction. Hallelujah to his name. So look with me at Luke, the fifth chapter of the book of Luke. Glory to our God. And in this passage of scripture, you find where uh, Jesus needed to minister to some people. And so there were so many people that were crowding around him that he asked Simon Peter to launch out his boat, let him use his boat so that he can minister to the people without being crowded, okay? And so you continue in that verse, and it says, um, he's, when he saw them, he asked them about the ship. And then in the fourth verse, this is what he says. Now, when he had left speaking, when Jesus had ministered and said what he was going to say, watch this. He said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets. He said, launch out into the deep, and he says to let down your nets. So what was he doing? He was giving him instructions, giving him directions on what to do. Hallelujah. First of all, he said to do what? He said to launch out into the deep. Second thing he said, let down your nets. What is that? That's instruction. That's direction. That's guidance. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So he told him to launch out in the deep, right? Let down your nest. Now watch this. But he gave him an expectation. What was the expectation? That he would catch a large large gathering, a large drought, as it's called here in the the King James. But in other words, he would catch a a, a big gathering of fish. Amen. Now watch what he said. And Simon Peter, or Simon answering, said unto him, Master, now listen, Listen real close. Jesus gave him instructions, told him exactly what to do. And he said this, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. We have toiled, we have already used our skills. We are skilled fishermen. And we have toiled all night and we haven't caught anything. But he says, nevertheless, what did he say? He said, nevertheless, in spite of all of that, <laughs> in spite of all that, he says, he says, nevertheless, at thy word, what? At thy word, he says, I will let down the net. Some of us need some neverthelesses in our lives. <laughs> some of us really need to pick up that word nevertheless. I've done all I can do. I've done this. I've done other things. I've worked my skills. I've worked my profession, and I'm not getting what I want to get. You need some nevertheless. You need to hear what the Lord is saying to you and do what he says do in spite of what you've already done. Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus. That's so good. I think I'll clap myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we need some nevertheless in our lives, especially in days like this and times like this. You really need some nevertheless in your life. Hallelujah. When you get tired of your own way, <laughs> you get tired of trying it and trying to do it your way, amen, you're going to soon enough, you, you should come to yourself and realize you need help. You need God. Now, Peter, when he was here fishing all night long, the Lord hadn't spoken. <laughs> but when the Lord speaks, let me say it again, when the Lord speaks, when the Lord gives a word on something, you do that which the Lord speaks. Many times in the church, uh, the Lord will speak a word or give a word to someone. And so because sometimes we're so, mm, do I say it like this, Father? Sometimes we're so 
uh, caught up in the vessel. <laughs> Sometimes we're so caught up in who said it, amen, that we don't think it's from God. But the one that God gives you a word, he's going to use somebody to give you a word. Most, of the most cases, sometimes he'll give you a word by yourself. But most times he's going to use somebody else to give you a word. And when you receive that word, your responsibility at that moment is to act on that word. To do what? To act on that word. You know, sometimes we get caught up in financial difficulties and the Lord gives us an answer. The Lord says, you need to tithe. He says, you need to offer. Hallelujah. And because we, we flesh it out, I didn't say flush it out, I said we flesh it out, and we think that we are not going to have enough or whatever, then we don't do that. So what we're doing is we're robbing ourselves, listen to what I'm saying, we're robbing ourselves of what God has for us. Amen. And so it's anything that God tells you, give you a word on, and you don't follow that word, you just rob yourself of the benefit or the blessing on the other side of that command, on the other side of that, of that word that you just received. Hallelujah. Because, you know, there's a saying, and I'll never forget this saying, it is that your, 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 your blessing is right on the other side of your obedience. Hallelujah. When you do what the Lord tells you to do, you follow his word, then you'll see what God says come to pass in your life. Hallelujah. I tell you, some of us, we better, we, we, well, matter of fact, all of us, we better thank God we better thank God for his mercies every day. Hallelujah. Amen. So here it is with, with, with Simon Peter when they cast out, and he did what he, the Lord told him. And when verse 6 says, and when they had th this done, not when they thought about it, <laughs> but when they had this done, <laughs> they enclosed a great multitude of fishes so much their nets break. Now you think about that. After they obeyed God, obeyed the word that was given to them, then they got, watch this, the full blessing on the other side of their obedience. Oh, Father, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I tell you, the Lord is so faithful. He is so gracious. He is so good. He is kind. He does what he says he's going to do. And nobody can stop God from doing what he does. Amen. He is the faithful. He is the true. He is the living God. And there is no other God but him. It was such a blessing that he had to, that, that ship began to sink, they had to call on others to come and help them to, in, in order to, to it, was so, it was just so much, put it that way. It was just so much. In your life, God can put you into the overflow and uh, you have to learn how to do like these guys did. Amen. Call others and be a blessing to them. <laughs> Sometimes we get so much overflow and we think it's all for us. And many times it's not just for you, but it's, it's, it's for you to be a blessing to others as well. Amen. The Lord our God is faithful, saints. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. I want you to look with me in the book of Hebrews. <clears throat> I spoke this word to you a moment ago, but I want you to see it. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, in verse 1, listen to this. I want you to see. Because we're gonna, what we're going to see is, the, is, is what God said. In verse number one, God who has sundry times and in divers manners, what did he, he spake. In other words, he gave a word, amen, in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Hath in these last days, watch this again, spoken a word, okay, unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he have what? He made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory, an express image of his person, upholding all things, here it is, by the word of his power. By the word of his power. Hallelujah. When he had himself, by himself, purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So the word is already endued with power. There's power in the word. When you speak the word, the power of God is released. The power of God goes into action. Hallelujah to his name. You know, a lot of times you think you got to be right here with me or with somebody for the power to work. No, the power transcends places. It transcends location. When you speak the word, the word has no limitations on how far it can go. You gather right here with me now on live stream. The word is penetrating that place where you are, just like it's penetrating where we are right here, right now. Because, see, let me tell you a secret. Because, see, God knew, and God already knew what we were going to have to do during this time. Amen. And so God has already prepared the church, prepared us 
in order to be able to stay in touch and be able to con contact one another, continue to spread his word because we need his word. There's never a time when it comes where we can do without the word of God. Hallelujah. We need the word of God. And that's why I encourage you to continue to make sure that you stay hooked up with the word of God. Make sure that you're watching. Make sure that you're hearing. Make sure that you're still doing the word that God speaks unto you. Amen. Because I tell you what, God is not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. God has nothing but nothing to repent of. Hallelujah. God has never, as people say, God never make a mistake, but don't, don't put him in the, in the in, use that in a, in a situation where it's not appropriate. Amen. God does not make mistakes. So God does not have to repent. Amen. If he said it, he's going to do it. So watch this again. So God backs up his own word. You don't have to back up God's word. Now, let me, let me tell you a secret. I, I love telling secrets that God's secrets. <laughs> you don't have to show off the word of God to anyone. You have to believe that when you speak, what you speak that God has spoken, hallelujah, it's going to come to pass. It happens. Hallelujah. You cannot you should not, watch this, try to make it work. The word is full of its own power. Hallelujah. So when you speak the word, it's already got power to do what it's going to do. Amen. So it's not up to you to make something happen. It's for you to watch God do what he said he's going to do. His word declares in Jeremiah, he said, I watch over my word to perform it. He says again, he says, I, I, when I send my word, my word cannot return to me without having completed what I sent it for. Hallelujah. So that's the power of the word. Now, let me tell you, that's why we, we need to make sure we're speaking the word, giving God something to look for, giving something, God something to work with. Hallelujah. Because he watches for his word, not your opinion. Oh, I love you anyway. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God is not looking for opinions of men. He's looking for his word. God is not looking for feelings. He's looking for his word. God's not looking for fear. He's looking for his word. That's why the word of God says, be anxious for nothing. In other words, have no fear about anything. Because if you speak that word, you stand on the word of God, you're going to see great things happen in your life. You're going to see all the deliverance that you could ever stand and take in your life. One of the things I, I, I begin to even more emphatically do lately is to bring God in remembrance of his word. Lord, you said this. Hallelujah. I even been going so far to tell God, now, you can't let this not happen. Because it's your word. Amen. You say, oh, you can't talk to you. You can't. I can. I have the freedom to talk to God like that. And guess what? You really do too, but you just don't realize it. Amen. God said, come, let us reason together. God said, bring my word to me. Let's talk about it. <laughs> so if he said it, I have a right to bring it to him. Right. Amen. So I told him, I said, Lord, it's not enough manifestation. We speak in healing, but we're not seeing enough of it healing. Hallelujah. And I believe right then that he started moving on some things, people's behalf. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So we have to be bold as lions. Hallelujah. Even when we come to the throne of God, he says, come boldly to the throne of God that you might find help. <laughs> and we need his help. So don't, don't, don't think God is looking for timidity. God is looking for fear in the sense of being a, afraid. But there is a fear of God we must have. And yes, really, you know, let me, let me straighten something out real quick. <clears throat> there should be a, a, a fear of God that says I'm afraid to act up with God. It, it really should. Amen. You know, you know, one of the things growing up, you know, with parents, <laughs> amen, one of the things that kept me from acting up was of being afraid I was going to get my hiney whipped. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I said. Amen. But there was a respect for them. Amen. I honored them by being afraid what they would do to me. <laughs> Amen. So don't, don't, don't get it. Don't get it wrong with God because God will correct you. Hallelujah. But we need that word today. We need that word right now 
activate it in our lives. And you cannot be timid to bring the word of God back to him because he says his word shall not return void. So when you bring it back to him, God's going to do it. Amen. If God said it, do you believe it enough to bring it back to him? Hmm. Think about that just a moment. I want you to just lift your hands to God. Lift your hands to the living God and thank him right now that his word is being fulfilled in your life. Thank him right now that he is doing what he said he's going to do. The good things he's promised you that he's doing those things right now. Thank him right now. Father, your word, you sent your word, you sent your word to heal me. Hallelujah. And I speak to my body right now. The word is upon you. The word is taking effect in you right now. Nothing but nothing can stay out of order in my body. But body line up and be in agreement with the word of God in the name above every name, the name of Jesus the Christ. Come on. Lord, you promised that you will prosper me. Hallelujah. You will lead me and you will show me the way I should go. You said it. You said it, Lord. You didn't say circumstances or situations had anything to do with anything. But Lord, you promised. You promised. And I bring your word back to you right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord hears you and he hears your heart. Hallelujah. You can't get tough with God and, and <laughs> you can't get tough enough with God where God going to be sheepish. <laughs> Amen. You can't come strong enough with God to make God back away. Who do you think you were talking about? We're talking about the Almighty. We're talking about the everlasting. We're talking about the true and living God. And he has <laughs> no fear of you. <laughs> you know what he says in his word? Contrary to that. He says he honor those that honor him. He says he honor those that honor him. Now, let me say it like this to you. Let me give you another way of saying that. You trust him, he'll move. Ha. You come to him, that's honoring him. That's saying to him, I need you. So you give him the honor of his rightful place in your life. Oh, Father, thank you so much. Thank you for so much. I'll tell you right now, you are not defeated. You are not defeated. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror through him that loved you. And guess what? He gave you that word that you are more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. You're an overcomer. My God, I don't care what comes against you. You overcome it. My Lord, my God, he is faithful. He is gracious. Saints. He is good. He is kind. Nobody, but nobody is like our God. Nobody, but nobody compares to our God. And he upholds, his, he upholds things with his word. <laughs> with his word. With his word. He'll uphold you with his word. Hallelujah. So let your mind be on the things that God speaks. That's why we need to meditate the word of God. We need to think on the word of God over and over and over again until we see what God has promised come to pass in our lives. Don't be sheepish. Don't be afraid. Stand strong in the, world, in the Lord and the power of his might, knowing that his word is a mighty word that cannot be defeated. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I love the Lord. I bless him, and I bless you today. So, Father, I thank you for these precious people that are before you right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for all those that are hearing my voice. I thank you, Lord, they hear me, and they hear you through me. And I thank you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus that lives are being changed. I thank you, Father, they take hold of your word. They apply your word to their lives. And I speak change, Father. I speak change. I speak immediate change. I speak right now, Father, to your glory and to your praise that things are happening right now. They're being elevated. They're being brought up right now. I declare, Father, in Jesus, oh, God. <clears throat> Hallelujah to the Lamb. Lord, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you right now for your mercies. Father, we do things that are just so ignorant. Whew. Forgive us. Forgive us for our selfishness. Oh, God. We praise you and still act crazy. We praise you, Father, and still, ha. oh, God, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy, Father. Let your word penetrate our hearts, O oh God. 
that we honor you in everything, in everything. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I pray for these precious people now that they come to know you as the living God. Hallelujah, knowing that there is no other God but you. I thank you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, your presence, your spirit is moving in the lives of these that are hearing right now. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, those that have no relationship with you be moved to come to you, Father, to reach out to you, to call upon you, because you said in your word, if we call upon you, you shall be saved. So, Father, I thank you right now for the mighty, mighty move of the Spirit of God in every household, in every place, wherever they're listening, Father. Let your glory be seen. Let your glory be seen. Let your glory be seen. In the name above every name, the name of Jesus the Christ. If you prayed that prayer of salvation, we want you to know that we are so excited for the decision that you just made, the decision for Jesus Christ that you just made. Please remember to comment down below so that we can connect with you as you embark on this awesome journey. Before we go, we want you to know that one, we are praying for you and that God is with you. Two, subscribe to the channel and hit those no that notification bell so that you know the next time that we upload. And three, share this message with a friend so it can impact and maximize their lives. We'll see you next time.